What's up, guys and gals? Chris Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my office. Thought I'd do an evening show, 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, something like that. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about eBay, going to talk about some sold listings, um, and then we're going to answer some live Q&A and things like that. And then hopefully, you know, I can uh, show you guys some tips and tricks and things like that. So anyways, welcome to the show. If I sound OK, let me, let me know. It is a live show if you see a little live button next to it which means you can also um, you know, type in questions, remarks, all that kind of stuff uh, in the feed. So anyways, yeah, that's what's going on today. And uh, we'll get right to it here in a second. Um, if you guys don't know who I am, make sure you subscribe to my channel. On a part-time basis, I, I basically flip used goods that I find at thrift stores and garage sales predominantly. And I'll put this stuff on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth, and other consignment avenues in town. Today, we're gonna be specifically talking about eBay. And uh, hopefully I can, you know, get you guys your tips and tricks and show you guys some really cool finds. And uh, with the hopes that you guys get all pumped up the next time you go out there and hustle or you try to find some cheddar or something good like that, um, you know, it, it's always good to see that someone else has kind of done it or paved the road or uh, done the mistakes, things like that. So anyways, it's good to see everybody. Got 31 viewers in the house really quickly. I mean, we've only been live for like two minutes. But it's good to see people here. I'm going to shout out a couple people, and then we'll get right to kind of some of the things that have sold and things like that. we got Garbage Monster. We have Shamrock Pixie, Colorado Kid, Cody's in the house, Green Giant, Jennifer, Franchise Kicks, Globe, Brandon, Caribbean, PJ Miller, Jan P, Nick K, Zachman, Nose Picker, and the Colorado Kid. So what's up? And Marco's in the house, too. we got a lot of people. What's up, Matt? What's up, Kelly? Good to see everybody. Okay. So, hey, what's up, Kristen? Uh, good to see you as well. All right, so a couple of things real quick before we uh, get down to the content. Be thinking, what is uh, what is the this look right here? That was in my last video. If you caught it, I asked you guys specific questions, and then I got called something really interesting, which was a sort of bona fide. No, no, I got called an Asian warlord because of like the whole. Anyways, what do you think this look is all about? And name me. Go ahead and name me. That's cool. I, I'm all good with it. So. Okay, let's talk about something back in October that, that sold. I'm going to kind of go, because October I sold, I don't know how many boots or whatever, but uh, I want to show you some interesting things. And uh, I think I picked up these for $11. I'll just show you right, right off the cell phone sold here. And I think this is the best way for me to do it. I don't like, I used to like doing screen share type shows, but then it just takes forever to go back and forth. So here is something you should be looking for. A very interesting kind of thing. A furry boot like this, very, very, very interesting kind of stuff. I mean, most people would be looking past it. Now, I come across fur boots every now and then. But typically, when I come across them, they have uh, not holes in the fur, but places where the fur is kind of gone, you know? And so I pass those up. In fact, when I bought these right here, I'd probably said no to like three other pairs that I had found that week um, that had just for missing, like a little dot it looked like. So this was the best uh, pair that I did find. And uh, if we take a look at more pictures about this thing, uh, these boots are really, really cool, you know? Um, we have that right there, they look awesome, right? So these are the actual pictures that made it on eBay. You can see that. And the bottoms are really good too, right? So the bottoms are real good. And the bottom said like Finbull, right? Finbull, Norway, you know, a lot of times, when I got, okay, not a lot of times, but a lot of times when I go out and I source for shoes or I source for boots, used stuff that I can put on uh, eBay, I kind of know, I would say, 70% of what I'm looking at already. 30% I, I kind of look up just to make sure, or I look up because I'm completely unsure. Um, so this one I was completely unsure, but I was like, I know it's worth something. Like I clearly know that much. Uh, so these are made by Finbull of Norway. Uh, they were all around, they couldn't have been more than $13. I mean, my average, is between like ten and fifteen dollars when I buy a pair of boots or shoes, so it's somewhere around there. Um, these sold for seventy-eight dollars, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, it was a good size. It was a women's seven and a half in really good condition, as we can see from the bottom. I mean, they were in very, very good condition. So look for stuff like that, but uh, you know, rest assured that you're probably going to come across some that you're going to have to not buy before you get to the ones that are, you know, really worth some good coin. Uh, those are actually in my. Uh, shoe guide i believe if i'm not mistaken so anyways <laughs> i have some people saying i look like a bona fide death rocky look from game of thrones that's good i got the uh the aquaman thing yesterday that was good surfer ninja banshee i'm a banshee that's sweet i like that um 
So Kelly says, I'm in Texas and I don't see fur boots too much. I'm in Austin. And I think those were the second pair of fur boots that had sold within a month on my store. Okay. Let's talk about a boot fail, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, I just thought it was kind of okay. You know, we'll talk about some fails too. I'm not like perfect or anything. Uh, pretty close, but not there. So these are, you know, I like picking up this style because I can put this style in my booth. All right. So that's just like the typical, uh, you know, hiking boot style. And I think they, I picked up these like a year ago and think, you know, they finally, finally sold. They got Vibram undersoles and everything like that. And more than likely made in Italy. Let me see if I can, um, more than likely made in Italy, but just the brand wasn't the strongest thing. I go for the look and these only sold for $23. I was probably 10 bucks into these. So not good. I consider that to be a huge fail because I always try to source things that I can make a minimum of 50 bucks pure profit on. That's like, like my thing. Like that's the thing I like to do. Uh, let's talk about another pair of boots. Um, and I would talk about boots because right now people are really looking hard for them. And I think it's one thing that you should get. I mean, look, shoes are one thing and there are a lot of shoes to find at a thrift store. I mean, just cruise through a thrift store, take a look at all the aisles and you'll see nothing but shoes for the most part. And boots are cool because they kind of stick up outside of the crowd. And leather boots are even easier to spot because they stick up and they're brown, black, or, you know, they look like lizard or rattlesnake or something like that. So this is a type of boot that I like the general style, which is like side zip, ankle, chukka style. Uh, typically, uh, these type of boots will have a side zip or they'll have three uh, eyelet holes on each side, um, but they're not quite boots, which will typically have five to six, sometimes more eyelet holes um, or lace guides included. You know, So these are much smaller. The, the rest are right about at your ankle. And the funny thing about this that I'm about to show you is that I use these things for probably two years. And I bought them for about $10. And uh, these are called Breather Right ankle boots, side zip, right? I use these things all the way till there was a hole in them, okay? So I'm not even kidding. We're learning some good stuff on this show, guys. And that is you can live an awesome hustler lifestyle and use some goods and still sell it for great profit. Look, those are nice boots, right? Uh, it's kind of like a beetle style boot. Oops, that picture never flipped correctly. Oops. Um, but, you know, I do pictures like this. If you get my shoe guide, you'll see all the pictures that I usually take or the angles that I take. But I wore it down to their cracks and the holes in this boot. Can you see this? You can see this, right? Isn't that crazy? This thing sold for $58. And I wore it for two years all the way to where it almost had a hole in it. So, you know, it just kind of shows you if you have a good eye. Um, and I had picked those things up probably five years ago. And then I wore them heavily for two years. I wore them every now and then for like the first two years, something like that. And then I recently decided to sell them instead of putting them in my garage sale, which I had recently. So kind of cool. You know, you never know. Um, but don't ever, you know, don't, be, don't ever be afraid to use something all the way and then still flip it for money because that's fun stuff. All right, let's talk about a refund that went down. This is a bag refund that's pretty cool. Uh, this was found at a Goodwill. It was five bucks, if I'm not mistaken. The people at the Goodwill just flew by this one. They probably thought it was some Johnson Murphy or some Fossil Bag or something like that. It was five dollars. Now, who wants to guess that right there? Who wants to guess the brand of this guy right here? What do you guys think? And the funny thing is this picture right here, which is really good. It's a clean picture, right? I mean, look at it. Right, we got a little white background going on. It's a little experimental picture I was screwing around with. That was shot right back here when there was a table back there. Um, and all I did was I flipped a actually, I had a whiteboard, which is like those mar marker whiteboards, right behind it on top of a table that's like a rubber made table, like a camping table. And I shot two lights at it, two direct um, lights at it. And this is the kind of picture that came out of that. Pretty cool, huh? Um, so, yeah, this is a coach bag for everyone that's guessing coach. This is a coach bag, really good condition. It was refunded, bummer, but it did sell again for exactly the same price. Um, but kind of just show you, these are some good pictures, blah, blah, blah. Took a bunch of pictures of this bag, even pictures of me opening it, boom. And then of course, when you deal with coach, you're gonna wanna, like like to me, there's like a little badge inside and you're gonna wanna look for that badge right there. Okay, can you kind of see it? That's inside the bag itself. And uh, a bunch of pictures of me opening it up and stuff like that. Uh, approximate dimensions with uh, length, depth, um, and then, you know, is it a laptop? Is it a messenger style? Is it a shoulder? Does it have a shoulder strap? It's kind of important things that you have to put into eBay. Uh, but I really do think, and I'm a huge proponent on the fact that 
a good picture tells a big story, right? If you're cheating on your pictures, you know, just trying to shoot them real fast with some crappy lighting or maybe a crappy phone or a crappy camera, shame on you, because you're probably over time shorting yourself somewhere between 20 and 30% um, of all the money you could have been making for all the years that you've done that. So don't do that, right? Take good pictures, non-distracting backgrounds, make sure it's well lit, okay? If you have even, what, like a five or, a, okay, not a five megapixel camera, but like a 10 megapixel camera with the correct lighting will look almost like 15 to 20 megapixels. Um, you just have to light it correctly, right? This one sold. Who wants to guess what this one sold for? Well, it got refunded, but it sold exactly. It sold again after three weeks. So what did this one sell for? Let me know. What do you guys think out there? Um, I'm going to read some comments from people that are here. People are guessing Coach, Tom Ford. Um, have I ever gone wrong with leather goods? That's a question from Joe Molina. Mm. Yes and no. Uh, yes, because, you know, maybe canvas plus leather that isn't a bat and kill or a CC Filson bag or something of that genre. You know, sometimes I'll take a swing on something and if I'm just like, ah, you know, the quality feels good. The brand is really what drives so many things out there. And so I made mistakes. I wouldn't call them mistakes. They're just not the kind of profit that I want to be making on something. I'll still make profit on it. It just won't be good profit. So this one right here. Sold for $129.99, right there with free shipping. $129.99, turned $5 into $129.99. That was found on a brief, I was exiting after mountain biking the Goodwill by my house. And I was just like, well, I have to do the U-turn anyway under the freeway, so I may as well go to the Goodwill on the feeder road. Popped in there, and literally two minutes later, I came out with this thing. So that was the uh, bag that I found that day. Uh, let's talk about... Another thing to ingrain in your head, because I want to, you know, if we're going to leave with something on this show that's pretty cool and tangible that you can actually take to the thrift store and make money on and put this stuff on eBay, I really think that this style of boot, which I echoed earlier, is really important. So the ankle style, you know, ankle style, chucka style, desert style is a really good style of boot. Okay, here's another one of these random boots that I sold. Uh, these were in really good condition. Anytime you see them that look exactly like this, there's a high chance they're probably Clark's, okay? I mean, Clark's literally like owns the marketplace for anything that looks like this. Um, so yeah, this one right here was, wow, I almost thought the price tag was on there. I was like, oh, I left the price tag on there, but no, that's the actual tag. It was, um, yeah, I mean, you can see the tag from the store that it was bought at. I don't know if it was Nordstrom's or whatever, but anyways, that happened to be on the shoe, which is cool. That's only a plus, really, at that point. Um, here's what it looked like underneath. So we got some nubs on nubs situation. Looks really good. And, uh, of course, yes, there are Clarks. Okay, so what do these sell for? This is, I think these Bushacre 2s is what they're called. Uh, these were somewhere around $13 to $14, 78 bucks right there. You know, I find it kind of interesting for the people that are here maybe, and that have not picked up my guide, this is not gonna turn into like, hey, you got to buy my shoe guide kind of thing. But you know, you can make one time or even two times if you barely execute the stuff in that guide. My, 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 whenever I make a guide for you guys, whether it's a bag guide or a bike guide or a shoe guide, I'm making it with the intention of sharing an entire income stream with you guys, right? For the very super low price of whatever you buy it for. And, I find it very interesting. A lot of, you know, some people are like, well, you know, I'm waiting for this to get paid so I can get the guide. I'm like, you can't stand not to get this guide. You need this so bad in your life because you have to unlock the stream, you know, like it's so important. But anyways, I got a really good message this morning from somebody on a random video and it said, uh, I don't know what it said, but it must've been talking about the shoe guide in the video because the lady was like, I picked up two shoes from the guy, flipped two shoes and no, I flipped one shoe, one shoe. She's like, I just want to let you know. I think she might've sent me a Facebook message. Anyways, um, and she's like, I may I turned like five bucks into a hundred on, what was it, a Kohan something. Anyway, so, and she's like, thank you so much. And I was like really proud that she actually executed what I had taught her in the guide, what I'm teaching most people in the guide. If you have the guide, let me know. But I mean, I spent a long time making that guide and it was not, I mean, it's twofold. It's like, yeah, it feels good to be rewarded for something that I built and spent hours, tedious, amounts of time, like in coffee shops building that thing, it feels great to be rewarded for that. Don't get me wrong. But it feels really good to uh, honestly share really good information with you guys. So anyways, uh, this Clark's 2 Bushacre, 
And if selling for $78, that was a good flip. But let's look at some really good ones. Let's look at some crazy flips. Um, and I hope you guys are having some fun. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. Kristen Springer, this is a pretty good remark. I can't wait to buy better lighting. So far, I have a clamp light, which is okay. Yes, you, it is okay. But I want those super bright white BGs. All right, so I'll show you what I'm kind of, it's like this is so rudimentary. But um, right here, we have a light right there. Cowboy Studio right there. We have a light right there. And that's just two lights hitting my face right now. And you can kind of see just what this looks like. And if, I, if this was an item right here with a white background, it would look amazing. So you don't need very much, OK? You just need, this is Cowboy Studio stuff, which is arguably the cheapest stuff. You find it on Amazon. It's really cheap. Um, if I were doing this all over again, I got the three light set up, which is two really big light boxes, and then this one kind of satellite smaller one. And in my situation, it worked out OK. The smaller one is meant to be overhead. So you have two big ones facing the item, and this satellite one that's like perched overhead. Um, if I did it again, I would probably just do the two big ones because that's enough to really illuminate something. But in my case, I have the gym and the other, you know, in the garage, and I have this here. It's like it played OK in my scenario because I don't like moving lights around too much. So I have another big light box in the garage that illuminates me while I make workout videos and stuff. But, you know, you don't need to break an arm and a leg. And also, look at your local avenues, guys. There's so many people out there that are trying to get rid of stupid things like this. And it's just, it's all over. It's all over the place. It's like, go to Facebook Marketplace, go to your offer ups, and check your Craigslist every single day. I guarantee you, within a month, you'll find two light boxes, maybe for 50 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. I mean, I'm serious. OK, but if you can't wait, you just want to Amazon Prime it to your door, probably 80 to 100 maybe, you know, for some cheapos. I like cheapos. Just don't move them around a whole bunch. So that's like pro tip number one. You can move around the good stuff a lot, like the three to $500 ones have uh, non-plastic clasping mechanisms and stuff. So you can move them around and like all that kind of stuff. But if you're just going to keep them stationary for a very long period of their life, then you can buy the cheap ones. OK, let's talk about something cool. I hope you guys are having fun on the show. Let me know. Um, okay, well, this one real quick. This was great. This was super awesome. So when I make a ride along video and I just put like sold for this and it's like, there's really no backstory to it because I don't put the backstory. It's hard to explain, but like, I don't know what it's going to sell for. I put an estimate in the ride along when you watch it on the you know YouTube channel and everything, but we don't know what it's going to sell for. Right. And when it sells for something awesome, that's great. Um, this one was really cool. This was a $5 purse. All right, so I was at a garage sale. This lady was moving to Vietnam or something like that. So she was like liquid, and she was in liquidation mode. Anytime you are at a garage sale and you hear the terms like I'm moving or I got to get all this sold or make me an offer, uh, fill up a paper bag, like all those kind of, these are cues, all right? These are auditory cues for you to go into serious, find as much stuff as you can mode, okay? Because I think I only walked out paying 40 bucks for everything that I bought that day from that uh, lady. And uh, this one sold almost almost immediately. Right here was a bag that I found uh, that was on a Rubbermaid table that had a bunch of other random bags around it that were kind of Guatemalan looking, like stitched with yarn and stuff. And then close by, hung up with a sign like each bag, like 30 bucks or 40 bucks, was all these other purses, like there were Michael Kors ones and stuff like that, which, um, you know, I, I don't really like that brand. But anyways, there was Michael Kors and there was a bunch of other, uh, anyways, like Doonies and whatever. And I'm not really into those. Like, But this one was chilling on the table and I was like, wow. And I felt it. And the first thing I did is I felt this thing and I was like, that feels awesome. Like, I like the way that feels. It's bohemian looking. It's boho, very, uh, what do you call it? It's a hobo style bag, right? Um, magnetic clasp inside. And only until I saw... The actual logo, where I was like, yes, like I know what that is. Awesome. Let me see if I can get you that logo. It's not even a logo. It was just inside the bag, clear as day. This was $5 bag. Check it out. That's what it said in there. Can you see this? I don't know if you can see it. I'm telling you, man, this is like the best. It's a fry bag, right? It's called a fry hobo. Um, really awesome bag. This style has been in for a very long time. And now that everyone's kind of dressing, I mean, bohemian style dressing has just been, it's, just been a thing, right? It's just never out of style, really. It's an awesome bag. Inside the bag is a bunch of bubble wrap, all right? That's how it gets to look like that and stays stationary while I shoot it. I try to get good pictures <clears throat> of anything that might be a blemish like that, really important. But feeling this pebbled leather, right, 
was the key. Like I was like, ooh, this is either like a fry. Just thinking in my head, I was like, this is fry. This coach, this is made well. This is something really good. And I was hoping it was going to be like, like Polo Ralph Lauren or something like that, but it wasn't. But still, fry is very good. Bunch of pictures. And if there's just too many blemishes and stuff like that, a lot of times on eBay, what I'll do is I'll put has scuffs and scratches, like see pics for all condition. Um, now, if you're thinking like, wow, he must explain all of his stuff all the time. All right. So here's my item description, uh, which is the very first thing people see when they land on your listing. Besides the actual title itself, nicely broken in, tough leather and timeless style. That's my item description, right? The actual uh, title is Fry Cara Hobo Magnetic Closure Shoulder Bag Leather Antique Tan Weather. Look at all those awesome keywords that are in this listing, all right? It's very important to use that real estate very carefully, okay? You don't want to be putting, uh, let's think here. Um, I don't know. You just don't want to be hunting around with really stupid terms that have nothing to do with the purse. So uh, let's read more. Let's take a look at what the actual description is. You guys are going to laugh because everyone's like, oh, you have to explain everything. It's wrong. You have to do a really good job with pictures, okay? And then the pictures, if done correctly and they're well lit, will speak for themselves. This is my description. In good condition, nicely broken in. Good weather look, soft, supple. See the pics, free shipping. That's it. It's right there. I'm not even kidding. Like, why would I kid about that? It's chilling right there. You don't need very much to succeed with eBay. You don't need very much on eBay to not get returns. You just need to describe appropriately. And you have to take really good pictures. <laughs> I know. Um, all right. What else we got here going on? <laughs> is electronics to bucks coming soon? No. Actually, funny thing is I am, I am working on the next guide, but it's very slow. Um, but I think you're going to like it. You can go ahead and guess what you think it might be. Um, but yeah, it, I think it's gonna be awesome. Okay. So let's look at something that sold that I sourced when rally roots was in Austin, Texas. All right. That's right. Rally roots. Um, they love me so much. They're like, we have to drop our business in Florida and we have to go see bonafide hustler. It's imperative. We must make the cheddar quest. Uh, you know, we, we must have all the cheddar luck on our side, but we must see the cheddar master. That's what they told me. Um, and so they dropped everything and they lost all this money with their business, but they came to Austin and they came and saw me and we went garage selling and I took them around and we had so much fun. Okay. So 99% of that, 90% of that story is fictitious. Obviously 10% is true. They did come to town and we did have a lot of fun and we hit up garage sales. So Ryan and Allie, I took them around the spaceship, um, and this was one of the finds that I found when they were in town. We went to a st we went to a place or a garage sale that had a lot of throwback vintage wear. It was all in like nice racks and circular racks and things like that outside of someone's house. And uh, in Austin, I don't know if you guys have this in your town, but they're like with a bunch of hipsters and stuff, so they kind of just sit outside their house and they all got hipster clothing, and it's like it's all pretty good clothing that could probably sell you know on ebay really well so obviously like the stock of what they were trying to sell at the garage sale you could positively infer that they probably wanted not ebay prices but close to those prices and so ryan and ally popped on all kinds of cool stuff i i remember distinctly bought this jacket and this knife so let's first look at the knife and uh, i decided to keep this because if someone breaks into my house they will die it's pretty cool a little damascus blade knife right here i like that um that was fun, but it's not as fun as this thing, though. This was, I think, $20, if I'm not mistaken. Patagonia field jacket. Really, really neat. Yeah. So Patagonia field jacket, if you're like, that's kind of dumb. Like, that's not really neat. Hold on. Let me show you the interior. Oh, yeah, and that's another thing that I do on my pictures, by the way. If there's a flaw, as, assuming there's not a ton of flaws, if there's a flaw that I'm like, i got to point that out, i got to you know, describe it somehow. <laughs> I will point it out, all right? You see that? That's my finger, all right? That's my finger. That's my little finger pointing to an imperfection in the jacket, which is a tiny hole. Man, these iPhone Xs are crazy. Whoa. Anyway, look at this. Yes, that's my finger. Um, don't be afraid to do stuff like that. See, the thing is, everyone's like, oh, there's so many rules with eBay. And not really. Like, you can do all kinds, of, all kinds of crazy stuff. Hey, check it out. My finger's back again. It's pointing at something in the front of the jacket. You know that's my hand. Look at look at look at that veins and stuff. You know that person takes creatine. Okay, so 
here's the jacket the interior like i said if you if you weren't impressed with the outside of the jacket i'm sorry but after you have a little field hunt and looking for doves and stuff it's party time because look at the inside of this jacket don't tell me that's not party time right there right that is serious party time yeah it's beautiful the interior was like oh okay buying it size large which is a really good size it wasn't like xs or like xxxxl or anything crazy like that it's a size large and sometimes when the tag tends to flip up a little too much you know sometimes you have to put your finger on it to keep it down so there's my finger again right and uh yeah so pretty cool of course another zoom in picture of another flaw that i was like right there on the cuff where it meets the wrist you know there's a little hole so all right this 20 dollar chore so <clears throat> anytime you're selling send sorry anytime that you're selling field jackets or something like that there's all kind of some cool words that you can pick with that you can pick barn jacket field jacket chore chore is kind of cool work uh, these are really good terms when you find these jackets. And if you're ever thinking, like, what the hell is a field jacket in the first place? Like, how would I even know if I'm looking at a field jacket? Well, field jackets are typically, uh, let's see, five to ten inches longer than normal jackets. They go down pretty far. And a lot of them are going to have two pockets that are vertical in the front. And so we can take a look at this jacket. Let me get the right picture here. Sorry. All okay, right. So we can see that this picture right here, you can see, you know, they're two real good vertical pockets where your hands go in here your hands don't go in like this but your hands go in down like that a lot of people will, will put uh, shotgun shells in there when they hunt quail or random stuff you know anyways field jacket um another thing that a field jacket may or may not have and a lot of them do though is a drawstring in the middle all right this one doesn't have it but if you were to look at like barbour or polo or some of these other field jacket brands i mean there's going to be a drawstring drawstring in the middle so there's some yellow bean ones something to look for this one sold for 88 dollars. so a really nice score there okay um let's look at something that i'm kind of still scared about i haven't got uh anything how many days is it till you can get feedback i mean how many days does the item have to stay out on ebay before someone can still return it what is it 45 is it 30 i think it's 30. i think i'm out of the i think i'm out of the return window here that's good okay I'm pretty sure. Okay. Anyway, um, this was pretty cool. This was found at a Goodwill. I think I'm 30 bucks into this. This went out somewhere. Don't know where. It just went to Kentucky. It has like a AF, AFO address or something like that. So maybe military. I don't know. But anyways, this was a $30 sale. This was a transfer kit that was. It says it's a HP laser jet transfer kit. So it's not the actual laser jet itself, but anyway, it was something called a transfer kit. It was sealed, and so it was either 20 or 30 bucks at a Goodwill, and I think it was 30 bucks. And yeah, this thing was still in the box, so I put pictures of the box and everything like that. The crazy part is, in the item description, I put, new in box will be shipped in this box. I will just affix a label on it, see all the pics. I'm not even kidding. Like I do not care sometimes when I make these listings. I keep them brief, and you take good pictures, okay? It says it right there. See it? New in box will be shipped in the box. I'm just going to put a label on it. I will just affix a label on it, see all picks. So funny thing is, I would have done that, but then it went to this like, you know, airport exchange thing in, in, in KY, Connecticut, Kentucky, sorry, Connecticut, sorry, Kentucky, yeah. Okay, so I went to Kentucky, and uh, at that point I was like, okay, it's gonna be like handled 5 billion times and all that kind of stuff. And even if I pack it right, they're probably gonna unpack it and when it goes through customs or whatever. And so, yeah, I decided to pack it. I managed to ex have a, exactly a box that it fit like perfectly into, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, that one sold for two hundred seventeen ninety nine. That was a really good one. Um, pretty good, and I think it I think it's thirty days. So I think I'm completely out of the window here. I didn't get any positive review from that one, but pretty interesting stuff. Okay, let's let's kind of vary it up a little bit. If you're like, all right, all right, that's cool. Like, let's let's talk about some other stuff besides bags and shoes and stuff like that. Bonafide hustler. What else are you selling out there? All right, something cool. How much would you sell that for? Land Rover hat. What do you guys think? Land Rover hat. This was a two or three dollar find at a thrift store on a Wednesday. Camouflage Land Rover hat, right? Nothing crazy. It's been worn. It's got little sweat stains on it. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah. See, specialty type stuff that have big followings. So like. You know, if this thing had said Porsche, well, you can't sell Porsche on eBay, but you can sell other things. 
Um, this is said, um, I don't know, just Barbour slash Land Rover or things like that, you know, collaborations. or. Uh, but this hat just said Land Rover. That was it. $50 hat, right? So that's pretty good. $50 sale right there. Not too bad. Um, you guys want to see a cool boot hustle? I'll show you a cool boot hustle. And then we'll kind of get some questions down. Um, oh, and I'll show you something else. Um, I'll show you a return. Here we go. Now, someone asked, do you ever get scammed from Jan P? It's a really good question because I, I had a feeling I was going to get scammed on this. All right, so this is a Pendleton scarf that I wore for two years while it was listed on eBay the whole time. So I was just wearing it in wintertime, just whatever. It was actually a really good scarf. And the day that it sold, I was like, oh, man, now I got to ship my scarf off. That sucks. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, Pendleton scarf. You would be thinking, like, these things are going to sell for like 100 bucks, 50 bucks. No. Most Pendleton scarves don't really sell for that much. Um, so while this is a dry clean only type of material, you can clearly see in all the pictures that this thing is impeccable, impeccable. And this is where good pictures are really, I think, you know, help a lot. So it's impeccable condition. Um, I think I was only two or three bucks into this scarf. I found it at a Goodwill like, way long time ago. Wore it a bunch, sold for 17 bucks. Then I got a open a return case and I read a little one liner. It said has multiple holes in it, which is complete, complete garbage because I take good pictures. I know if something has a hole, trust me. And wool is one of those things that I inspect heavily before I make sure it goes out the door. So, and plus, if something had holes, like, I don't know, it's okay to wear holy jeans and stuff like that, but other things that have holes, I can only think of maybe one or two of my actual pieces of clothing that has holes in it. One is a Patagonia windbreaker that I put sail tape on because I thought it was kind of cool that I had a hole that it had earned, right? It snagged itself on a tree somewhere on a mountain biking trip. And I was like, that's awesome. So then I taped it real quick and I made it look really good. So I'm okay with that hole. Um, and then I think I have, huh, I have a hole in the crotch region of one of my Ruka shorts, but I love it so much and it's so soft that I'm still sporting them every now and then. I know it's embarrassing, but that's a hole that I like right there, right? So if something has a hole, I know where that hole is. Like I just know, all right? So this thing definitely didn't have a hole. And yeah, that was probably a scam. I authorized a return. Well, I didn't, but eBay did. And they haven't sent it back yet, so that's good. And I think they're outside of the return window. So uh, they're about to be. No, they're outside of the return window. I'm almost positive. So that's awesome. So even if you take returns, <clears throat> it's not, you have to take returns, but even if you get a return, don't get bummed out because there's still that whole like funnel system going down before you actually have to refund the money. You know, like maybe you get five returns a month or 10 returns. I don't know. But at the end of the month, how many of those 10 really got shipped back? So it's all in your favor until you know, it's there at your doorstep and it shows with tracking that it's there. Okay. <laughs> what else we got here? Okay. Um, yeah, it hasn't got back yet. Kristen Springer with a $10 super chat. My girl, there we go. Thank you so much. It says, thank you for guiding us and providing knowledge. It is very much appreciated. So that's coming from Kristen Springer. Thank you so much. That makes me feel good. Um, what else we got here? Okay, you guys ready? More show or we want to end the show? What do you guys want to do? More show or end show? So you got to comment that right now. More show or end show? Because if we go end show, then I'll end the show here in a second. But if we go more show, I'll show you some cool things. It's up to you guys. Ooh, I'll show you this one. This one's pretty good. More show or less show? I told you I was going to give you guys some good value. I ain't screwing around. I want you guys to make some money. <laughs> All right. Um, what do we got here? Oh, I, I flip a lot of random things. I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I have made sure to follow through with my advice of diversification. I diversify all the time when it comes to things that I put on eBay. So let's talk about this one. Um, gosh, there's so many good ones. Okay, so let's talk about... Gosh. Oh, gosh. You guys want to see something that I wore for six years of my life? And then I sold it for a profit right here. I'll show it to you right now. I ain't playing around. So recently we had a garage sale 
And while I was having the, while, okay, before we have a garage sale, obviously if we want to have a super profitable garage sale, which ours, we made like 600 something dollars on it, not made, but we recouped. Uh, this was, so we had to go through the whole house, right? Before you put things together, you kind of just, you don't just go crazy. And I have a lot of good things. So like, but a lot of it's thrifted. So um, I wore this thing for at least six years, maybe more, maybe more. I mean, I'm, I'm dead serious. I, I have pictures from way back in the day with this thing on me and um, yeah. So this thing has been worn and because of me, it has this thing called piling or peeling as an issue. So, you know, it's a piece of clothing, but yeah, this right here, a Gary Fisher sob Jersey, which couldn't have been more than, I don't know, five, 10 bucks, something like that at a thrift store. So yeah, Castelli sob Jersey, uh, commemorating the probably the late nineties or early two thousands days of Gary Fisher and their actual uh, partnership of sob which is neat. Um, so Gary Fisher, if you didn't know, is a mountain biking brand and they were closely associated with Saab back in the day. And so they have some really cool like looking jerseys from back then. So this jersey made by Castelli, which is a really, really good brand, Castelli, C-A-S-T-E-L-L-I. Uh, the logo of Castelli is an actual scorpion. So you should see that real quick. So you can kind of spot a Castelli jersey. Now I'm not gonna be perp uh, you know, popping on any, all Castelli stuff, but when Castelli pairs up with you know, strong mountain biking brand or something vintagey. It's you know, and it's not like some race for the cure or um, you know, some benefit thing with a bazillion sponsors on the back. When it's actually tied to like a biking brand or something like that, and the thing's gonna look like this: a little scorpion. See that right there? And it says Castelli above it. So this guy sold for forty bucks. Now, there's nothing to really brag about, but the fact that I used it for you know six years of my life and then made a profit on it is pretty cool if you think about it. So I promise I'll show you something. So there it is. Let's talk about something that <clears throat> a viewer said, no way it'll sell. No way it'll sell for that much. I'm not even kidding, right? No way. It was a comment. I could probably locate that comment. But yeah, there was a viewer that said, no way. So I'll show you a $5 find. I think, I I'm not even kidding. I think I found this thing exiting the same way after a mountain biking tra trail thing and I exited and I had to go around the freeway to get to my house. Uh, I had to do a U-turn and so the Goodwill is on the exit road. So, you know, this was found within two minutes. And uh, this was a kind of funny one because this was a $5 find. And let me just show you a piece of this. And you tell, you tell me if you remember the video where, where I popped on this. What do you guys think this is? Here's your, here's your clue. What is that? What is this, Bonafide? Come on, Asian Warlord, tell me. Like, what is that? You guys guessing? Come on, guess, 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 guess. This was chilling, chilling, chilling. We all know it has a zipper, so it could be one of two things. It could be a bag or it can be something 50 shades of grayish, if you know what I'm talking about. No, um, what is this thing? Yeah, it's not my fly. Uh, oh, dang it, I gave it away. Um, what do you guys think? It's a jacket. It's a to me. No, it's not a to me. Someone's going to figure it out in two seconds. Because when you see leather with brass, very few brands do that. So what do you guys think? <clears throat> Man, some weird, some weird remarks are coming through. Um, Kelly says a briefcase. No, it's definitely a bag. It's definitely a bag. Um, I'll show you another one. I mean, I'll show you a side of the bag. Yeah, Joe Molina, my man, you know what's up. All right, so that right there was $5 at a Goodwill. Boom. That's a CC Filson garment bag. Um, arguably new, because none of the leather had a single crease in it or whatever. So when these things go through airports, even for one micro trip, they'll start to have creases in the leather and smudges all over the canvas. So this is, um, if you ever read Bags to Bucks, there's a section, you know, regarding canvas and leather bags, and we talk about this brand. And um, a $5 find, a viewer of mine said, there's no way, all right, no way it'll sell for what I was claiming it was going to sell for. And my, I think on the video, I said 150 bucks. So <laughs> Trump 2020 is saying $5 is kind of expensive, isn't it? Um, sold for 160 bucks, actually. I was wrong. No, but the person's like, yeah, right. That thing will never sell even over 100 bucks. So yeah, pretty pretty interesting. I thought that was a that remark is just like, all right, like whatever. But yeah, it's just 
it's just crazy, you know? So that was, uh, that's like some November sales. And then we'll do one more real quick. Oh, this is a good one too. This is the power of diversifying, okay? I'm gonna tell you the story behind this one. This was, I know exactly where I was when I bought these, the circumstances, everything. All right, so we have some roller skates, not a big deal. These are full leather roller skates, unlike the vinyl ones I had in my video the other day. Um, these were in box too, which is great. They're in box, they're like super awesome. Okay, so anytime you're dealing with roller skates, and these are not to be confused with roller blades or speed skates, but these are roller skates, you know, think boogie nights and all that kind of stuff. And this is a plain black one with a plastic, what do they call it? A pla not base, they call them something else. Um, it eludes me at this point. Uh, plates, it had a plastic plate. Okay, so like here's the plates, that part where the wheels and the trucks are attached to, it's plastic, all right? So not this is an entry-level Riddell skate. Um, but still, Riddell's a good brand for entry-level roller skates that people maybe want to roller derby with or screw around with, mostly roller derby. Um, you know, there's nothing crazy about this. It's my gym floor in the background, by the way. <laughs> a lot of creatine and sweat on that floor. No, um, but yeah, you know, it's like I'm saying, non distracting backgrounds. You don't need to have the latest and greatest stuff. You don't have to have the best camera. Uh, this was shot with a a, cam a 16 megapixel camera. Okay, so just kind of gives you, you know, any any new Canon or Nikon is going to be a 24, or even one from three years ago is going to be 20 megapixels. So this is shot with a 16 megapixel camera that is not that good you know it's just well lit you light something good enough it starts to show and remove all the shadows and things like that where blemishes can hide brand new skates we all know that i mean i really didn't have to even put all these pictures but here's the thing you've got to put 12 pictures when you deal with ebay you've got the size in there if i have room for the picture for the size which i typically do on boots and shoes you got to put that on there because so alleviate a lot of questions like what model is it? Blah, blah, blah. Where was it made? You know, so if you put the picture of something like that, we know this is a size 10. The stock number is blah, 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 you know, and it's made in China. And so it removes all of the messages that you have to like go back to and stuff like that. So put that picture in there when you're dealing with shoes or skates or something like that. If you can locate that picture. And with any kind of shoe, whether it's a Kohan to an All Saints to uh, you know, a John a John Barbados, they all have product codes inside the shoe for the most part. More pictures. Now, funny story behind this. Oh, yeah, there's a little scuff. <laughs> but there's a picture of the scuff. So you ain't going to return it for the scuff, right? So you know what? This one right here uh, was a $20 pair of skates. It was marked at 20 bucks at a thrift store on a Wednesday, which was hectic as all hell. And there were a ton of resellers in there, tons. And this reseller lady, I, was, I turned the aisle, and this aisle is kind of a dead-end aisle, and it's really slim. So I turned the aisle. It's about uh the length of my truck all right so it's, it's the length of a toyota suv to go down it then you have to kind of like wedge yourself around to exit out and i come around the corner i'm in the aisle i'm looking and i see this lady with a blue box and she opens it and some of the tissue papers flying out and stuff i'm like oh whatever's in there is new you know and uh she looks at him and then some lady next to her who's a reseller is like "Ooh, nice skates and she goes yeah these are awesome she's like Oh, and I hovered around her, um, not uncomfortably, but like I stayed close, right? In the off chance that she would put that thing down, me and my cheddar biceps were gonna scoop it up. But quite honestly, the next phrase was the part that I was like, you know what, this is why I make my channel. And this is why you should always pay attention to good resellers out there. Um, and that is, she goes, I just don't know too much about roller skates. Okay, this is a, clearly a new item right with a product code right on the side with a barcode too like you could barcode it and that's what i did you can barcode it and it'll show you the ebay new listings of it i mean how did this lady not know that so she like she goes i don't know much about roller skates and she puts them down me and my cheddar biceps we scoop it up and that was it i mean i was like dude sold for 110 bucks so you know that is basically what it comes down to. You don't have to know everything, but sometimes the cues are right in front of your face. Sometimes you get a barcode. Sometimes you get something that's brand new in a box, and you don't have to know everything about it. But if you know it's brand new in a box, and assuming it's not electronic or something that has like 5 billion accessories that come in the box with it, you know, or a board game where you have to count all the pieces, if something's new in the box that's so obvious like this, 
I mean, pick the thing up, right? Go to another corner of the thrift store and do some research, all right? Because this lady literally just lost out like 75 bucks. Really easy money. These things sold like within two weeks. So, you know, like anyways. Um, so I think that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about was stuff that's sold. I got some really good ones that I could talk to you guys about. But anyways, I mean, some really good ones from the same thrift store. Here's something I won't show the picture. A $20 jacket sold within a week for 180 bucks. That was good from the same thrift or a different thrift store, but very close to that listing. Actually, no, that same thrift store. Here's another list, something that I picked up for $15, sold for $230. Um, <clears throat> so you might wonder why you always go to that thrift store on a Wednesday with a big line. It's because of things like this. You can make really big money in a very short amount of time. Um, okay, so that concludes that part right there. Um, hopefully there were some good tips and tricks in there, some motivation for you guys to get out there and realize like, okay, he's not all about bags. He's not all about shoes. He does other things. And these are some of the other things that I look into, right? So someone's saying, I'm going to move to Texas. Ha ha. Dude, I'm telling you right now, you can move to Texas, but Austin, worst resale game on the whole planet. You never want to leave. You never want to move here. There's no opportunity. Uh, all the resellers go broke. Um, there's nothing. It's just, this place is a barren wasteland. And, um, yeah, you're going you're gonna to hate yourself every minute of every day. And we have all the allergies in the world here. And uh, we have killer bees and bad ants on the ground. So we definitely don't want to live here. Um, but I heard Houston's good. And I heard Dallas is cool too and San Antonio. But Austin, worst. Um, let's go into an open Q&A real quick, and then I'll be out of here. Let me make sure my computer's charging so this show doesn't go downhill real quick. <laughs> All the bikes are junk too. That's what someone's saying. Yeah, all the bikes are terrible here in Austin, Texas. Nothing's good here. Okay, so um, what do we got here? Let's let's get some questions. Give me some questions so I can get you some answers. Uh, did you see CP Espresso score today in West Texas? I did not. He's in West Texas. I have to call him up. He's gonna have to come down here. Um, here we go. A Goodwill sometimes writes the prices on the bags on bags inside of the lining. Why? So you have to determine what that th what that actual uh, mark is. Is it a paint pen or is it something like a Sharpie? Much harder to get out with a Sharpie, easier paint pen all day. Um, but if you're gonna do paint pen and stuff like that, a lot of times nail polish or barkeeper's friend combined can get that out. Ah, that's so weird. Like if the actual surface of the bag is vinyl or leather, why would they work? If they do it in, in leather, like that's just crazy. Um, I think that's a case by case situation. I would not be bummed out about that so much. Just keep looking around for bags because until I really know what I'm looking at, if it's a nylon bag, then a Sharpie marker is gonna be really tough to get out. Um, you can use things like oxy carpet kind of stuff along with some nail polish remover. And sometimes that does the job, but I have taken Sharpie markers out of the inner parts of shoes that I used to resell from REI and garage sales. And it takes a while. It really does. You have to do nail polish plus the oxy thing and scrub in circles, reverse circles, front and back, back and forth, like up and down. Like it just gets really annoying. And there's always like a light black haze or whatever haze left on there. So I don't know. I would say that's a case by case situation. It doesn't sound like it happens all the time. Maybe it does. Try to find other thrift stores that can uh, help you out with that. Don't do that because most thrift stores here in Austin will just do tags. Um, yeah, I mean, just about every thrift store here does tags or stickers. Stickers tend to fly off every now and then. Tags will always stay on the product. Um, and then rub okay, so rubbing alcohol gets Sharpie out, says Joe Molina. I agree with that on like other surfaces, but I don't know about like nylon, like jacket type surfaces and stuff like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but let me know. Uh, Trump 2020, can we be friends like in real life? Yeah, sure. I'll be your friend. Sure. Uh, Marrakech 7. How come you don't go to family thrift stores? I do go to family thrift stores. I mean, every thrift store is technically a family thrift store. Oh, I see what you're saying. So yeah, there's one that's uh, across the street from my house, across the, kind of like, a, anyway, it's a very close intersection. And it says Salvation Army Family Thrift Stores, Family Thrift Store. And I can't go in there because I don't have a kid yet. And I, I have a wife, but I don't have a kid. I have dogs, but that doesn't quite make a family. Like you have to have a kid to have a family. So uh, they don't let me in anymore. And so every now and then when I'm bored and I want to thrift that store, I do a little Tom Cruise Mission Impossible thing. I cut a little rectangle at the top of the building and I go down with like my little wires and I search and I go underneath the little Salvation Army laser things and whatever and I try to get some good cheddar and I leave money on the, the table as if I was paying for it, you know, and then I take my cables up and I get out there. So that's what I do. But one day when I have a family, I won't have to do that anymore. Um, 
Okay, what else we got here? <laughs> when is the Strella IPO? I'm gonna be working on Strella, which is my private label brand, a lot next year. Um, there's stuff that I have to shoot for it. I just ordered some more fonts for some more products I'm gonna be creating with it. Um, and then, I don't know, when my wife and I can look at these fonts, we're gonna pick the ones that belong on the new products. And so, I don't know, no IPO anytime soon, but you know, I'm gonna be working hard on Strella. It's gonna be in conjunction with my other channel. So that's next year. Um, Martha Howard, I can't get people to leave feedback, not even if I leave a reminder note, how can I ask? Um, you can message them, but the note is probably the best way to do it, you know? Um, I know there's a way that sometimes you can leave a reminder note with like a 10% off of your next purchase from my store. You can do things like that. Um, I've done feedback stickers on top of the boxes before, but I'm doing any more. I think the easiest way to get feedback, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to ship the item faster than what they were expecting. I think that's good. That and some really good high quality pictures, typically you get feedback. But I think I'm with, I'm totally on you because I'm totally with you, not on you. Um, that there's 20% that you'll only get. Let's say you sell 100 items, 20 feedback is probably what you get back from it. And that kind of sucks. Like what happened to the other 80? But feedback matters when your store is in its infancy and stuff. Once it climbs into the hundreds and the thousands, you're like, I don't know. I can't say that I'm like bothered by it or anything like this point, but I can see if you are starting out how it can be a, a thing, you know, like a very big deal. Uh, never more antiques. What other chan channel? The fitness channel. Yes, the fitness channel is going to be um, a big emphasis of next year. So definitely check that out. That channel has more subscribers than this one now, which is nuts. Um, all right. Any more uh, questions? We have joined late. What's up, Bonafide from Holland Hobbies? And uh, yeah, what's going on? Good to see you. Uh, I haven't seen you in a while. I bought some shoes with pricing on the sole from just from Jan P. I couldn't get it off, so I colored it in. Think it'll still sell. So you basically camouflaged it. Yeah, I mean, as long as the shoe is in good condition, it's in demand, meaning it has a dedicated market on eBay of people that want to buy the shoe, just disclose that you camouflaged it or there's a marking on the bottom. And I think you should be able to sell it just fine. I have camouflaged a couple things when I can't take a whole like Sharpie thing off, like it, it says like, something, you know, maybe 1099, right? I'll convert the one into an eight conda. I'll turn the zero into an eight. I'll turn the nine into an eight and then the other nine into an eight. So it looks like just a bunch of eights. Uh, but yeah, I don't do it a whole lot, but it's like I tend to only get into shoes that need very, very little, uh, you know, cleaning or anything like that. Um, okay. What other kind of questions do we got here? Uh, we have 23k for this Nevermore Antiques. We have 23k feedback, and I just got my first negative in a few years. I hate feedback. You know, negatives are just part of the game. I haven't had one in a while too, but you know, when I get one, it's just like, eh, it sucks because you don't get that 100% thing anymore. It's like 99.7 or something like that. Um, <laughs> Seymour says, I I purchased some vintage panties, and I'm not sure how the market is. Please advise. Um, I don't know because I don't do that, but I've heard that there is a market for it. That's all I know right now. Um, but I can't help you out there, so I'm sorry. What is one item, this is from Adele, uh, A-D-E-L. What is your one item that people always overlook but you scoop it up? Honestly, the back section is huge, hugely underrated. That's why I made a guide on it. Um, so when it comes down to one item, Oh, uh, one does stick out to me, but that's going to be in the new guide. It's going to be pretty cool. There's one that people just completely look, look over all the time. I would even say today, like a majority of resellers don't even pick up something as basic as the Guitar Hero. I got a guitar back there. You can see them, right? These things. I mean, I mean, yeah, you have to test them out, and yeah, you have to pair them with the right game. But when you do, it's a really fast-selling thing, and a lot of people don't want to go through those hoops and stuff. Or maybe they don't, they don't even want to mess with FBA, which is the place to sell it. I mean, that's huge. That's a big one that I, I would sell. I would say only 30% of the resellers that I know would get into that and know the power of that. The other 70% are fearful. They don't know exactly what's going on. And uh, they don't feel like putting a couple of things together, you know, and I get it. But 
it's easy. You find the games predominantly at GameStop, eBay, or a pawn shop. You find the guitars all over the place, like thrift stores and garage gyms and stuff like that. You combine these two things together, you test them out somehow on an Xbox 360 or a PS3, which is really easy to do. And that's all you have to do. So um, what else we got here? Uh, Inet Motobiker. I found a Chrome Industries bag yesterday. Whoa, that's awesome. Um, okay, it's a little something a little bit over my head here. Do I know anything about Spurs? I just come up, came up on some silver embellished Kelly Spurs. I don't know too much about Spurs. I wish I could help you out, Joe. Um, Heather's Place, on your fitness channel, do you do some videos on bad cholesterol foods? I'm struggling with the bad stuff, LOL, but who isn't in the US? Um, yeah, cholesterol is one of those things that's kind of found in so many different things. Um, so I would say bad foods that have cholesterol that come on the top of my head. There's a lot of oils that you shouldn't be messing with, but there's some really good foods, and I love these foods, but they're just they're just high in cholesterol, and typically the way that they're prepared will make them bad. But things like scallops are very high in cholesterol. Shrimp, right? Shrimp is a big one, high in cholesterol as well. Certain cheeses, and yeah, but they taste real good. It's part of our diet. So will I do a series about it or something like that? I probably will, but it would, might only appeal to a very small part of my audience. A majority of my audience are usually overweight people that want to get lean or toned. And then the other large majority is uh, people that are skinny that want to put on muscle. So that's like the two main people that are watching or the two main genres of people that are watching my channel on the other side. And so I do some diet things every now and then on the channel, but I, it's like not the priority. But yeah, I, you know, reducing cholesterol, um, I would say, you know, most people are like, start with eggs. Uh, I would not start with eggs. I would start with things like shrimp. I would start with scallops. Um, there are like, I want to say clams and things like that, mussels. Those are all pretty high in cholesterol and they're good, but they're so small that you tend to eat a lot of them, right? And so cholesterol goes sky high after that. Um, yeah, shrimp is super good. Yeah, it's there's a lot of fish that's involved with that. So basically, um, <clears throat> Okay, what app do I use for scanning barcodes? Okay, if I use, there's an eBay app, you get on your phone, hope you have your eBay app and you have your Amazon app, both have barcode scanning uh, parts of them, right? So you can just use that. If you're wondering like, how much more can I sell this on Amazon FBA? Then, I mean, there's a barcode scanner there. It was bef in the game before the eBay one came out. The eBay one is in the top right corner. It looks like a camera, but really you can turn it into a barcode scanner as well. Um, Heather's Place, I don't do scallops or clams, but way too much shrimp and other fish. So there, that's probably one of your issues right there. Also, there's some certain things like uh, that are proven to kind of reduce and control cholesterol, things like Cheerios and steel cut oatmeal. Um, I, I always do gluten-free oatmeal in the morning recently. I mean, not always, but like, you know, it definitely really has, it creates a good base for your gut, right? And uh, it really reduces incidences of acidity and things like that, but it gives a good base to your gut. So whatever you eat throughout the day doesn't tear up your lining, you know? So I like oatmeal in the morning and uh, it's, I think it's shown that certain types of oats help uh, help curb cholesterol as well. Okay. Huh, the pro, huh. Okay, last question about regarding food. How do you eat your shrimps, Heather? Or how do you eat your shrimps healthier? and stuff like that, which typically have a lot of cholesterol too. Um, other questions. Can I link the channel? You can look it up. Uh, the, the fitness channel is called BODDAMN, B-O-D-D-A-M-N. So play on words, B-O-D-D-A-M-N. Never more antiques. Just ask that question. And um, G. Josto says, I hate eBay. I constantly telling me to lower my price on the guitar controllers. Put them on, you know, put them on Amazon. That's where they belong, really. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, that's pretty much, uh, here's, a, here's a remark. Uh, thanks for the content. I'm going to buy your shoe guide soon. So for the people that are watching this right now that might have one of my three guides, and the funny thing is I have another guide that's coming out very soon. And it has, oh man, it has 50 items in there <clears throat> and it's free. This thing's coming soon. But anyways, uh, that guide is awesome to the point where I was like making this and this other guide and I was like, wow, I kind of wish I could pull 
some items from that one. And I did a couple of them, but you'll see. Anyways, there's a free guide coming out, a really good one too. Um, Hector NS, do I sell most bags locally or online? I sell most bags, it's a 50-50, I mean, it's both. But I would sell, mo mo majority of them go to eBay. Um, but bags do well. I mean, people have to carry their stuff everywhere. They go traveling, they have to go to lacrosse meets, or they have to go to wherever, and they have to bring a bag, right? And so whether it's a duffel bag or something to protect their cameras or a rolling bag that's TSA approved that has to go through an airport, I mean, people need bags. And that's why, much like shoes, it's very necessary. Like, do you not have bags at your house? No. You always, everyone's got bags in their house. They have shirts, they have underwear, they have shoes. And, so, you know, outside of underwear, you should be looking for other things like that too, you know, high grade things. Um, and that's the reason why I think a lot of, no one, I don't understand why people never talk about bags. It's hugely, under, <laughs> it's hugely underrated when you go into a thrift store. It's crazy. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Have I had any luck using BrickSeek? I don't deal with Legos too much or anything like that. Um, oh, okay, buckle up, let's go. Okay, so do I use Seller App, Inventory Lab, Accelerist, A Seller Tool? Those kind of things are really predominantly used by people that are 80% FBA, maybe even 90% FBA, 10% uh, eBay, or the re remaining is like Facebook Marketplace, things like that. So I do not use Inventory Lab or Accelerist or A Seller Tool. I just use the Amazon Seller App. Um, okay, so Jan P says, I have tons of book bags. When you're dealing with bags, I would say one of the easiest genres to look at that is pretty profitable will be internal frame backpacks and duffel bags. Like those are really good. But then again, I say that and I'm like, all right, there's also garment bags that are cool, rolling luggage, there's just a lot. So that's why I made the guide because you know, if I have to look at like what is always super good, garments bags are really good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of fun to do bags. I can't, I can't say that one is really better than the other. They're just so, it's just a fun genre to hustle. Okay. I think that's pretty much the show. I've been on for about an hour. And let me see. So I think someone's linking my workout channel. Let me make sure that's the right link, which I think it is. Yep, it is. All right, so someone linked my workout channel, so you can go check that out. I'll put it down below. It's an official link. If you guys want to go subscribe to it, that's cool. There it is. Thank you so much for whoever did that. But that's basically it. I guys, I hope you guys really enjoy the videos. Um, you know, I try to create good stuff. I'm about to edit a hot shot after this. And yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I make these videos so you guys can see that A, I'm the real deal. B that He's not just about you know quick cash grab or anything like that. He actually like wants to teach people like how to make this money. So if you happen to like this content and you don't quite want to go the paid route or anything like that, and I get it, um, there are like 700 other videos on this channel where you can learn some really really good things for free. But you get to watch a fair amount of videos. So anytime that uh, you know you ever see your favorite YouTuber out there, I'm not saying I'm the one. But your favorite YouTuber out there, whether it's Rally or Rockstar or any of these people, and they come out with something that helps you shorten that learning curve, that's all it's going to do. It's going to shorten the learning curve, and it's going to reward the person that created that content. So don't ever be opposed to anybody that wants to take a step back, wants to start creating some stuff, and really take their expertise to, a next, to the next level and start teaching people on a very broad scale, like how to do this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I think you'll soon find that you know anytime that i want to learn something amazing whether it be final cut or shopify store stuff or whatever i am never personally never watching 50 to 100 youtube videos i just don't because the overlaps too much I, it is, I can't i can't take it but i'd always go to like udemy or something like that and i buy a course and i take it and it takes forever but that's the way I like to do it. I like good, concise information from people that know what they're doing, that are highly rated and highly spoken of. So, and you can go to places like Udemy and learn all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's what I do personally. And uh, I like to shorten my learning curve when it comes to certain things that I'm really into. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, see you guys on the other side.
always, if you're just watching my videos, whether they're these live ones or whatever, hit the like button, leave me a comment, even if it's after the fact, like leave me a comment. So, uh, and the last thing I'll uh, leave with you guys is from Heather's place. It's called Udemy. So this is where I get all kinds of stuff. You can get Facebook marketing courses from Udemy. You can get uh, how to run proper Instagram, how to shoot DSLR, you know, cameras properly. You can learn everything on Udemy. I don't know if there's too much eBay stuff or Amazon stuff, honestly, but uh, anything else, you know, editing and the things that come with content creation, you know, for me being a YouTuber, I've done all my stuff off of Udemy. So yeah, go check it out a lot. It's really good to see you guys and I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler uh, video. Take it easy guys.